Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome to your 8th Roblox Lua GUI script tutorial. And I'm going to show you guys how to make a custom health GUI. And uh, as you can see, I already have my little GUI making set up here. So let's dive right in. This is going to be a screen GUI because it's just for the player to see on the screen. I want to name it health. Now I want to get a frame in. <clears throat> Resize it. Okay. Oops. Position it. That looks about good. Okay. Now that we have this frame, I'm going to name it bottom, and I'll show you guys why in a few minutes. We can name it whatever we wanted, but still, I just want to keep that name. Mm. Insert another frame. I'm gonna size it to one zero uh one zero it takes up the entire length of this flame frame one hundred percent I'm bad at talking today now we're gonna color it because I'm particular with color and very much so actually I'm gonna color uh this that. Okay, that looks good. Uh, I'll call this top for OCD's sake. So now that we have our GUI designed, I'm going to insert a local script and let's do our thing. And I'm still going to explain why we just put two frames <coughs> one into another. Um, I'll explain that when we get to the math part of this. So since we're making a custom health GUI, we can disable Roblox's uh, one that they give us with game.starter GUI set corgi enabled method enum.corgitab.health false. So what this does is set corgi enabled is a method or a function <coughs> of starter GUI. And it with it you can set the visibility of existing corgis that Roblox provides us, like the health GUI, or the chat, or the backpack, whatever. And the second argument is just true or false, whether it's visible or not. Uh, now we're going to define the player, so local player, since we're using a script, we're going to repeat wait until player.character. And now, since we're working with the player's health, we need their humanoid for that. Local uh, humanoid equals player dot character wait for child humanoid. Uh, so what this one does, it just constantly waits until the player's character is true, or until it's loaded, and then we wait for the child named humanoid inside it, since it's usually going to be named humanoid. <coughs> so now here comes the math portion of this. Uh, on the more variable health math equals humanoid health divided by humanoid dot max health and I'll show you why we're doing this math here in a second actually I'm gonna show you guys how to use tween size for this instead of just making it instantaneously resize itself back and forth will make it do it smoothly and if you guys don't know about tweening it you should watch one of my previous videos that I did on that else you'll be kinda lost here uh, the first argument is udim2 value then uh, easing direction easing, easing style and the time it takes to move there so health math zero one zero Okay, so what this does is when the script loads, uh, we're going to tween the size of this frame named top, the top frame, to health math 0, 1, 0, keeping its uh, other size stats, the easing direction out, easing style sign, and it'll take a half of a second to get there. So the reason why we have health math is... Uh, Here's a calculator. So when the player's health loads, it's usually going to be 100 health out of 100 max health. 
So let's divide 100 by 100 to see what we get. 1. So, in other words, this variable is going to be 1. In other words, it's going to take up the entire space of this frame, 100%. Instead of being 0, 0, 1, 0, like it's going to be when we test, the size is going to be 1, 0. It's going to tween all the way there. <coughs> um, and that's the reason we have the second frame, by the way. If we just had it outside of the frame, you can see it would be very disastrous for the player. So, uh, yeah, we need to already define a frame that we want to fit inside because it can take up 100% of that space, and we don't want it to take up 100% of the screen. So, uh, we have this, but now we also have to make that code run when the humanoid's health changes because we want the player to keep track of their health. And that's why we have humanoid dot the health changed event. Connect a function to it. And since we want it to tween to the size of the health divided by the max health, we're gonna run this same code inside here as we just did because we want the same thing to happen. But we also have to have this variable again in here because if we didn't then every time the health changed it would still be running on this variable in other words one or one hundred percent so every time the health changes we refresh this variable in a sense to its new health time to test do 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 gonna go into workspace change my health to 70. Boom. And now the health is regenerating with Roblox's health script. Isn't that pretty? Change it to 1. And 0. Or no. 0. 0. There we go. And it just stops in place. But it's refreshed when we respawn. 50 generation oh so pretty so I guess I'm gonna make this a model and leave the link in the video description I usually don't do that but I think this looks rather pretty and I guess you guys can study off the code already there even though you should probably be typing all this out yourself and yeah you can design it however you want uh, have fun see you guys next time